Okay, so now I will talk about finding fair allocations. Um, first, I'll describe it graphically and then I'll, I'll give a numerical example. All right, well, here is, so given that, given the exchange economy, two agents, two goods, so remember we draw the Edgeworth bucks, which basically represents the set of all feasible allocations. So we put agent A here, agent B here, all right? And this is basically the coordinate for good X. This is uh, coordinate for good Y, total number of good Y, total number of good X, uh, which we basically find by adding up the initial endowments, if you remember. So let's suppose, let's suppose this is the initial endowment, all right? Um, and then let's suppose the contract curve, the set of proto efficient allocations is this, all right? Contract curve, which basically represents the set of all proto efficient allocations. So from this picture, what I understand is that the initial endowment is not proto efficient. So therefore it cannot be fair. All right, because remember, fair allocation means Predo efficient, so PE stands for Predo efficiency plus uh, uh, equity or NV freeness. All right, so it's not Predo efficient at the first place, and hence it's not fair. So, how can I find a fair allocation? Well, what we can do, obviously, there are infinitely many possible. Uh, there may be infinitely many possible uh, fair allocations. I'm going to show you just one way of finding uh, one way of finding at least one uh, uh, fair allocation. So what we can do, we can divide the initial endowments equally. It means the total number of good X, let's suppose, is split equally between the agents and the total number of good Y, the initial endowment, is split equally between these two agents. So that point corresponds to somewhere here on this graph. If this point was on the contract curve, it would mean it is not only proto efficient, but also uh, satisfies equity. So why is that? Well, if agent A's and agent B's allocation, uh, sort of a good on the number of goods, uh, number of good X of agent A and B are the same, and number of good Y agent A and B have the same, meaning those allocations are actually identical. Well, then by default, it's NV free. Whatever the agent's utilities are, if these agents have exactly the same, so two apples, two bananas. So you have two apples, two bananas. I have two apples, two bananas. There's no way I'm gonna envy you, right? Because what you have is exactly the same as what I have, two apples, two bananas. So whatever my utility function is, my, my utility is gonna be the same across these two allocations because they're the same. So therefore, I'm not gonna envy you. You're not gonna envy me, all right? So. Equal division of uh, goods is therefore envy free. All right? But it doesn't mean that it is proto efficient and therefore it may not be uh, fair. So, once again, splitting goods equally is not necessarily fair. All right? This is usually what parents do um, if they have, say, two kids and there's, uh, you know, chocolate and some money. And so what most parents do, they split the chocolates and the money or any other goods equally between these kids. And so they assume that this is fair. Well, it's yes, uh, it satisfies equity. However, it's not necessarily fair because these kids can actually be better or may be better off uh, by exchanging these goods. Uh, maybe one kid values money more than uh, the other kid and the other kid values chocolate more than the other. So if this is the case, exchanging these goods, uh, basically uh, non-equal allocation could be uh, uh, sort of uh, 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 could be better for both. All right. So therefore, once again, e equal division of goods 
is not necessarily fair. All right, which is basically what happens on this graph. Uh, we, we split good x equally, good y equally between these agents. All right, so let's suppose it's a point like this. And it's, let's suppose it's not on the contract curve. So therefore it satisfies equity, but doesn't satisfy proto efficiency. Well, what we can do is we can just let these two agents trade. All right. So how, uh, well, what's going to happen is that there's going to be some hypothetical price minus p x p y so there's going to be a hypothetical price of good x and hypothetical price of good y and these two agents are going to maximize their utilities subject to their budget constraints their initial endowment we assume is that this point where they split the total number of good x and the total number of good y equally so you can imagine this is the point where it represents how many <clears throat> good A, good X agents uh, uh, A and B has. So this is basically uh, divided by two, all right? And this is the point where let's represent it as WY, which is basically how many good Y agent A and how many good Y agent B has. And so this point is the midpoint. I mean, uh, they, they split the, uh, the total number of initial endowment for good y equally. So let this point be the starting point and let them trade. So in a general equilibrium framework, uh, there's gonna be hypothetical, hypothetical price for both goods, and then the agents are going to maximize their budget, uh, maximize their utility subject to their budget constraint, and they're gonna end up trading to this point, all right? in a general equilibrium. Well, then this point is pretty efficient because it's on the contract curve. And because the starting point is the equal division of the initial endowments, this point is a fair allocation. Okay. Uh, so this is one way of finding a fair allocation. I hope that was uh, clear.